This film is brought to you by New York Life and its dedicated agents. Proud sponsors of the NFL's team highlight films. New York Life, the company you keep. For me, this is a very happy day because I've hired a friend of long standing as the new coach and vice president of the Los Angeles Rams. But that's not my reason for bringing him back. The reason is simply that Chuck Knock is a coach who has brought success to every team he's been associated with, including the Rams nearly 20 years ago. Chuck Knox has a history of turning things around quickly. Under his guidance, the Rams went from NFC West also Rams to a remarkable run of five consecutive division titles. I personally know him to be a man of vision, integrity, and with a true grit to win. Ladies and gentlemen, our new head coach. Thank you, Georgia. <clears throat> it's a real pleasure for me to be here. And I'm extremely happy and excited about the opportunity to coach this Ram football team. I'm excited about the commitment that I have received from Georgia to do whatever we have to do to get the job done. It's where I started out 19 years ago. I stood here before you and everyone was asking Chuck who. And it's 19 years later and I'm back here and I have still a burning desire in my gut to want to win, to want to be competitive, to want to get the job done. I think Chuck Knox was my favorite coach as a Ram, partly because he would look you in the eye and, and talk to you, man to man. Uh, I appreciated that. I also liked the fact that he was, uh, he was a player's coach. He was tough. And uh, getting ready for a game against the uh, Dallas Cowboys, he said, I'd like to go out and take Landry on one-on-one -on -one in the midfield. <laughs> you know, I, I liked the idea that a coach was willing to get out and do battle just as he expected us to get out and do battle. Well, basically, we begin with the philosophy that the only reason a football coach has a job is to help make the players that he's responsible for coaching as successful as they can possibly be. Expect a different aura to surround the 1992 Rams next season because the possibilities at Anaheim look very bright indeed. The reason is simple. Chuck Knox will accept nothing less than the very best from his players. As a motivator and teacher, Knox is without peer. All out effort, all the time. It's what Knox demands and what next year's Rams will deliver. Without question, without exception. If desire describes the man who will make the Rams winners again, then talent defines the players who will do the winning. From Jim Everett will come spirals unlikely to succumb to defenders' desperate dives. While Willie Anderson and Henry Ellard combine to make the passing game as poetic as it is potent. On the ground, expect the exceptional from Robert Del Pino. A running back with the speed to turn the corner, and just as important, the kind of attitude which can turn a team around. But Del Pino isn't the only one fired up over next season. If you ain't selling out now, take it on in. If you ain't selling your ass out, take your ass on in. Now get out to the ball. Tattoo somebody. You. Here and he. Because from here on out, the Rams will all be star pupils in the school of hard knocks, where the only rule is hit first, ask questions later. The 92 Rams are ready to lay their bodies on the line, then lay out their opponents. The talent in Los Angeles is abundant. The desire to win, profound. And in Chuck Knox, Los Angeles has the most valuable thing in the NFL, a proven winner. Next season will be a year to remember because the Rams are committed to taking full advantage when opportunity knocks. Oh, 
nothing is more brutally basic than the premise, defense wins championships. And the Rams' defense is certainly champing at the bit. <laughs> of course, where the Rams truly excel is sinking their teeth into opponents. On defense, the key to success is stopping the run, thereby forcing the opposition into predictable third and long situations. Last season, the Rams didn't know where running plays were going, but their fans knew where they'd stop, in the arms of at least one Ram defender. Up front, the Rams were led by Mike Charles, Alvin Wright, Gerald Robinson, and Kevin Green. But when the front four wasn't making the play, L.A. linebackers were. Led by number 53, Fred Strickland, rookie Roman Pfeiffer, and the thinking man's merchant of menace, Larry Kelm, Rams backers bullied, bruised, and bested ball carriers all season long. Still, there's more to defense than stopping the run. Well, I think defensively, the, the strength would be in the secondary. Uh, we really need to develop uh, some linebackers and we need to develop some defensive linemen, particularly some players that have the ability to rush uh, the passer. Like Roman Pfeiffer, who though still in his salad days found all the roads that led to the quarterback. There are others who wear the gold and blue who know how to make quarterbacks black and blue. Plan B acquisition Carl Wilson proved to be a grade A pass rusher. And of course, Kevin Green was as relentless and destructive as you'd expect a tank captain to be. And when a quarterback slipped past Green, Mike Peel was able to handle the skinny. Then there's Gerald Robinson, who finds opponents' backfields his favorite neighborhood. Still, the Rams' greatest strength defensively is their secondary, which makes it a primary place to look for big hits. In the defensive backfield, Chuck Knox has a group of students well-versed in the school of hard knocks. But more important than hitting hard is hitting an opponent where it hurts, in the turnover department. In 1991, the Rams' secondary intercepted more passes than a chaperone at a debutante ball. Next season, the sailing should be even smoother thanks to Henley, cornerback Darrell Henley. Safety Michael Stewart. And rookie sensation Todd Light. This young and aggressive secondary makes short shrift of any opponent's ideas about going long. And with the addition of Steve Israel, the secondary will go a long way in helping the Rams find the promised land. And while football is the ultimate team game, it was the entire defense which led Los Angeles to victory over the defending world champion Giants in week two. With Kevin Green wired for sound, the Rams went east to play Giant Killers. Do your job! Play hard. Hey. Sit. This is play hard. All day long. Put your hand on the ground, bring it up for 60 minutes. That's all bring you guys do. Right. Let's get that to their ass. Let's go. Let's go. 4 3 2 Z. Ready? <laughs> <laughs> Nice, Cornell. That's nice. Hey, we're kicking their ass, yeah, and they know, they, know they know it. Look in their eyes, man. Take it out of here. You could see it in their eyes. The Giants were physically beaten, 
but it took a play calling coup to defeat them on the scoreboard. Draw play, Delpino, big hole, 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5. He is down at the two-yard line. Hell of a play. Great ball, the draw play on third and long. First and goal for the Rams. Delpino eventually finished the drive with a touchdown but it was Green and the defense which finished the Giants for the day. I know, I know, I know. I'm reaching down, baby, I'm reaching down. That's a nice job. You gotta love it, man. That victory underscored everything that is right with the Rams. I tell you what. You got anything left? Man, I am tapped. And that was a battle. That was a daggum war today. What is it about you guys coming here and winning all the time? You know, I think the Rams always kind of play better on the road. Yeah. And uh especially Giant State. I'm gonna get some of this prayer here. Knock it out, fellas. Offensively, it'll be a big challenge uh, to develop a running game and uh, give Jim Everett, who has more talent than any quarterback I've ever coached, a chance to, to blossom so that we don't have to lean on him, rely on him all the time to carry the offensive football team. If the idea is to carry the team by carrying the ball, the Rams have some bright lights. Cleveland Gary combined strength and savvy with savage determination to find the end zone. But for the 1991 Rams, there was little doubt which back was at the front of the class. Enter Robert Del Pino running. Although Del Pino led all the Rams rushers, he was equally at ease catching passes and of course running after the catch. For all his versatility, however, Del Pino's greatest asset is his ability to find the end zone. Snap, hand off to Del Pino, dives, he's in! Touchdown. E. Del Pino, Del Pino has the ball, Del Pino is over the goal line for the score! Back to throw at the 12, looks into the end zone, throws, and it is caught by Del Pino! Touchdown, Rams! Here's the handoff, Del Pino up the middle, 10-yard line, 5-yard line, he's in, touchdown, Ram. Robert Del Pino scores his ninth rushing touchdown, his 10th overall. Of course, scoring touchdowns while preventing your opponent from doing likewise is what football's all about. Fairly simple, really. And against the charges in week seven, the Rams made it look as easy as it sounds. Tight ends in for the Rams. Pat Carter on the right side, now in motion, and Jim Price on the left side on the line. Everett to throw, looking into the end zone. The pass is caught by Price. Touchdown, Rams! Everett under center, third and goal to go from the one. Everett calling signals, turns, hands it off to Del Pino, dives, he's in. Touchdown, Rams! A balanced offensive attack gave the Rams the lead. A determined defense made sure they kept it. Third down, nine. Ball on the one foot line, hand up, and it is Marion Butts caught in the end zone for the safety. And it's Green, Kevin Green, catches Butts for the safety in the end zone. And the Rams take a 16 to 14. Although it was a defensive charge which provided the spark, it was Jim Everett and Jim Price who made lightning strike twice. Three to 21, fourth quarter of play. 
Johnson in motion to the left of the formation. Everett back to throw, looking left. Has lots of time. Guns the ball. Caught at the two. Into the end zone. It's Price. Touchdown, Rams. Jim Price catches his second touchdown. It may have only been one win in a long season, but discerning fans saw more than a win. They witnessed a team beginning to gel, a team which not only knew it could win, but more importantly, believed in each other. You might not know it, but NFL quarterbacks undergo a remarkable metamorphosis when the whistle blows to start a game. You see, no other position demands the combination of raw courage and refined skill that quarterback does. Fortunately for the Rams, Jim Everett has both those qualities, and lots of them. Last season, Jim Everett threw for more than 3,400 yards, second best in the NFC. But merely appreciating Everett's ability to go long would be selling him short. Everett does more than air it out. He finds secondary receivers like tight ends Damone Johnson and Jim Price. He's got the guts to stand in the pocket and face the rush and the mobility to dodge problems and find solutions. But best of all, Jim Everett knows how to find the end zone. Of course, a quarterback is only as good as his receivers permit. And while Los Angeles is noted as a city with the gift of gab, it has some receivers who have the gift of grab. Aaron Cox, number 83 Willie Anderson, and number 80 Henry Ellard form a receiving triumvirate second to none because it would take a thesaurus full of superlatives to do justice to what they do best. It's better just to watch. Once again, Henry Ellard led the Rams in receiving by snaring 66 passes and gaining over 1,000 yards in receptions for the fourth consecutive season. And despite already owning every meaningful Rams receiving record, Ellard never stopped playing all out. Ellard isn't alone in his flair for the spectacular. Willie Anderson also knows what he wants and how to get it. That reception says a lot, not only about Anderson, but about the Rams. They've got ability, certainly. But more than that, they've got the will to do whatever it takes to get the job done. back, look, lobs into the end zone, far side, it is caught by Ellard, touchdown! Motion to the right of the formation, goes Ellard, throw, it is a catch, touchdown Ellard! Diving grab by Ellard in the end zone! Ellard to throw, looking right side, gets rid of it in the end zone, caught, touchdown Ellard! Everett back to throw, looking to the end zone, lobs to the end zone, it is a catch by Clifford! throw by Jim Everett and another clutch catch. Quite simply, the Rams aerial attack is more than a passing fancy. It's part of a strong foundation for the future. A football team goes only as far as it believes it can. Chuck Knox will make the Rams believers. Well, I think uh, you, you set the tone and the tempo as a head coach by the way you work, and you've got to appeal uh, to a player to want to be self-motivated and also show him what his success, what it can mean to him as a player, as a man, what it can mean for his family, and uh, outline goals and objectives uh, for that particular player. Against the Packers last season, 
every Ram displayed the true grit which will make the Rams winners next season. Jim Everett has more talent than any quarterback I've ever coached. Versus a linebacker on the left side, Tony Bennett is covering Cox. Let's see if the throw goes to Cox. Yep, at the 40-yard line, 35, 30 yards. Oh, the Packers really blew a coverage, Jack. There was no one with any kind of speed to cover Aaron Cox. The Rams and Everett sees that immediately and takes advantage. Offensively, it'll be a big challenge to develop a running game. Hand off Delpino. He dives in the air, and Delpino tumbles down. Touchdown! From the opportunistic offense to a suffocating defense, the Rams played with the pride, heart, and courage of a team ready to not only compete, but win. Defensively, the strength would be in the secondary. We really need to develop players that have the ability to rush the passer. Dejas gets into it. Sikahema will catch the short kick of the five. He's up the far side, side lines of the ten, cuts to the center of the field, bubbles the ball. It's grabbed by Newman. Newman's going to go in and score. Touchdown, Ram. Come on, Zendejas. Get it. Tony Zendejas, the only kicker in the NFL who was perfect on every field goal attempt last season, provided the Rams with the winning points in their 23-21 victory. It's time to say goodbye to 1991 and hello to a new era. Well, it feels good to be back. I'm glad to be back uh, with uh, Georgia and the Ram organization. What we need to do is raise that uh, talent level and uh, develop uh, the young players that we have and hope we can in some way uh, inspire and instill in the veteran players to come out there and play as hard as they can play. The Rams' talent level was dramatically increased on draft day when the Rams wisely selected defensive lineman Sean Gilbert and defensive back Steve Israel. Those picks underscore the franchise's commitment to success, something each Ram must do individually as well. But it is as a team that the Rams will make the greatest impact. And make no mistake about it, the Rams will make an impact next season. From practice to the postseason, from the front office to the down and dirty front lines, the Rams are poised to return to the ranks of the NFL elite. The Rams will hit the ground running next season. Chuck Knox will guarantee that. They'll also hit back with a revamped and rejuvenated defense. may seem daunting, but instead of doubting, have faith. Chuck Knox has made a career of coaching winners, and he's dedicated to ensuring that history repeats itself. Count on the Rams to be not only in the right place next season, but ready to answer when opportunity knocks. <laughs> <laughs>